In this video for the trading community, learn how to effectively spot and then trade the classic bull flag pattern to profit. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the Trading Classic One Good Trade and the Playbook. In this video lesson, a proprietary trader from our firm shares in step-by-step -step detail how he used the bull flag technical pattern in QCOM to make a winning trade. Uh, so uh, today we're going to go over the QQAM uh, Dr. S volume breakout trade. Um, so just very quickly what the Dr. S pattern is, is that we see institutional buying or selling on the open, followed by a very tight consolidation. And then after that, we'll see the next leg of the trade on pretty decent volume. So just very briefly, big picture, overall bull market, SPY, uh, new highs. Uh, the market was slowly grinding up during this uh, time period. Pretty much every dip was being bought, and then breakouts were still uh, working during this time period. Uh, the reason for the QCOM move in the morning was uh, presumably a city upgrade, and just overall the SPY was rallying, and we saw just kind of the volume come through. So just the intraday fundamentals, institutional buying right on the open, and then there was a bull flag pattern uh, that was very tight, and there was no volume on the uh, downside. This is a classic bull flag pattern, um, and it was showing us that the institutions were supporting the stock. Just some quick um, stats. The ATR was, is uh, 1.9. The average daily volumes is uh, 7.9 million. Our ball was three, so this was elevated. There's basically no short float, and the institutional ownership is 80%, which so is quite So you high. read about these, these, these patterns, these technical patterns. Is this really a classic bull flag pattern? We really have a, a live example of that? I believe so. We yeah. captured it? Yes. Um, so just very briefly, the uh, daily chart, uh, we see that it's breaking out to new highs for the year um, on good volume. So overall, this definitely sets up well for a, a follow through throughout the whole day. And then as far as the actual uh, pattern that we see, we can see that there was a strong move off the open that was on strong volume. And then during this um, entire period of consolidation, there was effectively no real spikes in volume. So the, the um, flag being this extension higher, or, the, or this here, uh, the leg being or the pole, yes, I don't know whatever you want to call it, um, being the uh, this move up here, the flag here, and then the breakout on one of the strongest volume bar days of the uh, trading session would uh, constitute the breakout. Um, so really this definitely sets up well um, because you can have a pretty tight stop. Um, uh, realistically, like the stop for this trade should be right below the bottom of the flag if this actually follows through. It's possible to, to even say that it shouldn't come back below 94, but that Kind of depends on your trading style. Um, and yeah, so we're going to go over as well just the uh, trade management as well as what we saw on the tape. Well, let's just go back to the flag. Mm. This really is one of those classic technical setups. So we're doing it on intraday as opposed to maybe a daily chart. Um, but also, where are we with QCOM on a longer term chart? So we are right here. It was around uh, 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 94. So, th so there was kind of like the gap from arguably um, a, a consolidation pattern. We are pressing up against prior highs. And given the strong volume on the day, that would be a good sign that we could break those highs. Um, so the uh, second part of this trade would be once you cleared this level, which was approximately 94 as well, then uh, you should get follow through and buying because we've kind of cleared um, all that volume and just kind of the resistance that was present in the stock. All right, let's go back to the bull flag. And so where are we in terms of price with the flag? So the flag was taking place between 93.60 and 94. The breakout was 94. The opening price was a little bit below 93. So the measured move for this, um, which is one way where you can actually set up price targets, 
would be to take this extension and then add this on to the breakout. So realistically, this was approximately a $1 move. So then you can say that a price target for this breakout would be 95. So if you were to have, let's say, bought this right at 94, uh, once it broke, which was what my trade was, and put the stop at around 93, 60, or 70. It's risking around 30 cents, and the the ultimate target on this trade was one dollar, so around a three to one. Yeah, and just for the newest guys in the room, you know, why does a bull flag work? What is that saying about the overall strength or weakness of the stock? And 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 what it's saying is, so you know, bull flag is we have a nice move up, we have a good price push to the upside. We have a good price push to the upside on elevated volume. Okay. And you know, so that's that flag part that Max is pointing out. And so that in of itself is indicating there's a lot of buy interest. The elevated volume and the actual pull, the price movement, is showing increased interest in the name. Okay, so there's that first part. And then, so when you have something that goes up a bunch and goes up a bunch on high volume, how can, how does it normally react? You know, how does a stock, after it has a big push up, normally react? There'd be a pullback. Yeah, it pulls in. It pulls in a bunch. And so if you have this flag pattern where the stock's not really pulling in much, and not only is it not pulling in much, but it's not actually even getting below a particular level as it's pulling in, and it's going sideways, what that's telling you, and, and the reason why this is a pattern worth looking at, is that there was buy interest, and it's not in any way pulling in as much as we thought, which means there's potentially more buy interest. There's probably more buy interest, or else it would have pulled in more. That's not the way stocks normally act. It's, it's acting very strongly. So we're not just presenting this technical pattern as uh, an intellectual exercise. There's a reason why this can be an effective pattern. There's a, there's a reason based on the price and the volume action and the pull in action why this is a powerful pattern. All right, the buyers are leaving footprints to you with this technical pattern that this is more likely to go up from here and as Max said, perhaps even a measured move higher, but, m but much more to go based on how it's acting. And then when we add on top of that, the fact that it's getting ready to bust above a longer term resistance level, that's going to add some buyers buying, some shorts covering, and a, a potential interesting trade. Yeah, so as far as the actual trade management, um, for me, I ended up only buying it on the breakout, but if you wanted to actually go in and see what would be kind of the uh, perfect uh, trade management, it would be to then go long tier one somewhere in this uh, bull flag after recognizing the pattern, so that way you can get a pretty good average price. And then once you actually saw the volume as a confirmation on the break, to then go tier two, and then it would be to uh, take off that uh, momentum tier once you see a end in uh, momentum so it would be in my opinion on this red bar or it could also be um, uh, so on the tape going into this like round number like many times like you'll see that the that the offers are stacked so uh, presumably selling into uh, 95 would uh, make sense as well and then uh, you would leave tier one on as kind of a, a core uh, position and for me I like to use each um, higher lows as stops as just kind of one way to manage the trade. If you want to learn three real-world setups that our traders use including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen that's going to open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not going to lose this video. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So I actually did take as more of a scalp trade this second um, 
or this uh, uh, double bottom here, and just kind of like my thinking was, was that this level was being kind of supported overall throughout the day. We see that that, that like momentum, uh, I like to use sometimes just like MACD just to kind of gauge uh, momentum um, in the stock. And we see that this price was supported, so buying as we're starting to actually see price uh, turn back up. The stock was only probably 20 or 25 cents. And uh, my target for this was, was this prior high. So then as we started kind of getting back into this area, I started closing it out. My thinking was that there could be some sellers back at this point, and at that point, I already captured around, I think it was 60 or, or so cents, and risked 20 cents in around five, six minutes, or maybe like 10 minutes. So um, just overall, it was smart to lock in profits, and it wasn't as though that the price was at absolutely shooting up on very strong volume. This was midday, so the odds for a, you know, a, a parabolic move, especially given the fact that there wasn't a huge fundamental catalyst, was probably slim, so that was reason for my sell going into here. And just kind of what we saw on the tape was that once uh, 94 hit, uh, the prices actually started to skip very quickly, so I automatically went in right on that 94 break. I got in at 94.06, and then it quickly went to 94.24. So we actually saw a very quick jump um, in price, and this is just something that I will uh, remember uh, next time that when you see that significant uh, jump in price, because I mean, like, usually Qualcomm will trade by the penny, and, or maybe there'll be a two or three cents um, skip, but for something like this to actually skip up 20 cents is quite significant and could be the sign that um, it'll actually follow through. And so then, there's usually a lot of selling at 9401, 9403, 94.07, yeah. and we didn't get that. We got a nice skip all the way up to 94.24, which uh, you know means that there's buyers that are just running over the, the sellers. Yeah, and then once we actually got to this price, I, I think for around like 30 seconds, price was being supported around 94, 16, 17. So it was showing you that there definitely were the buyers there to actually follow through on the stock. So like something that I, I might do next time is that if I see a name like this have that, um, jump and volume to actually add a much larger size versus a tighter stop because like theoretically if this trade is going to uh, work out once again there should be almost no pullback so there should be no reason to, to have a stop that's more than for this case i, I would have probably just put it as to add a, no but you uh, make a good point which is a lot of times we talk about volume so we want to see volume confirming a breakout but volatility confirms a breakout too so when there is uh, either a lot of volume which is just bowling over the sellers and a stock moves more than you think it should. So if something gets above 94, you might say, maybe it'll go up to 94.10 and that would be a regular move. And then it goes up higher. That is, that is of interest. And so it might be that just the volume comes in and, and, and creams all the sellers, but there can also just be a, a, a liquidity issue, which also shows strength because it means what? You know, if there's a price that's bigger than you think and there isn't necessarily the buyers crushing the the sellers and that's making it move up what is what can that but the stock moves up a lot and maybe it goes above 94 goes up to 94 94 40 and you don't necessarily see a lot of paying the offer just kind of finds a way to get there what does that also mean so you get that volatility move it's up 30 cents more than you thought you know, when there's an absence of sellers, it means the sellers aren't interested in selling here. Okay, that can be, that can be good too. That, so it's volatility and it's volume. Very important to notice around important areas, the volatility. Particularly when you're thinking about buying the pull-in. When you get more volatility, that's gonna get me more interested in buying the pull-in. When you get more volume, that's going to get me more interested in buying the pull-in. When you get both, that's going to get me even more interested. Okay, but volatility is important. Yeah, so uh, besides that, uh, just kind of seeing how there was support pretty much um, from uh, 94 through 95. So basically every few cents that the stock would dip, it would then just jump right back up. So like that can also serve as just kind of confirmation for this uh, breakout theory. And then for the uh, uh, traders on the desk that were trading this, uh, we were all speaking 
uh, while this trade uh, was uh, going on, and we were all just kind of pointing out different things that we saw on the tape. So being able to have multiple eyes following this trade definitely made this um, easier to actually stay in and follow through to the upside because there was so much uh, communication. Yeah. That's why I wanted to talk about this trade. Correct me if I'm wrong. I remember you guys teeing this up, this 94 level up in the AM meeting. Did I remember that correctly? Vaguely think so, yes, but, but also just kind of our filters uh, as well. Uh, we're all uh, picking this up because of our vol. Yep. So that we actually saw the follow through and then we were definitely discussing it before the uh, 94 break uh, during the morning, so yeah. I'm, I'm almost certain that you guys did. Um, we'll check the tapes. Yeah. Um, but also, I remember hearing you guys call out the level before it actually broke. And then I remember actually Kyle saying that he owed you a beer. I think I heard that right. Yeah. yeah. He does owe me a beer. But. Or a lunch. <laughs> Or a, pack of, or a pack of gum, I don't know what, it, I, it was something, he, yeah. you know, he owes you something. Did he pay you? Not yet, no. <coughs> I'm waiting on it. That could be a whole, that's a separate video. <laughs> yeah, he, he usually gets martinis, so. Oh, martinis. really? <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, hear, I, I heard Kyle thank you for calling this out, and I think Kyle, you made at that, to, at that point, this was, if not your best trade to date live, one of your better trades. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and so, look, you guys all uh, sit together, and I get so many notes from people about how it's lonely to trade as an independent and retail trader, and they wish they had people around them to share ideas, and this is an example of that. I just got one today from somebody in North Carolina who asked me to introduce him to all the SME traders in the Charlotte area so that he could trade with them, create a network with them, maybe even share space with them. Um, so if you're from the Charlotte area, reach out and we'll connect you guys. Um, but there's a lot, that's the way most people trade. And so you have that as a huge advantage. But there's something even more important than the fact that you guys are sharing information with each other in real time, which is you're teeing up for each other and getting ready to actually make this trade. You are going to, you are more likely to make this trade if you're all talking about how important that 94 level is, you get that in your head, it happens as opposed to you're just doing it yourself. As opposed to, you know, Max, you're just sitting there, you're not saying anything. You guys actually do a good job talking to each other on the headsets. I don't know why you need headsets since you're like five feet from each other. <laughs> Again, another video but it's better than you guys just G-chatting to each other, okay? Um, but that's, te that's getting you ready to push the buttons. It's not an accident that preceding you having your best trade to date, you guys were talking about it. Um, it, it just makes it easier. It's like, oh, we talked about that. Now it's 9401. We talked about if it got above that price that I would get long because it was a good setup. I remember you talking about in the AM meeting, but if you, even if you didn't, we just talked about it for the last five minutes. Here it is. Let me push the buttons and see what happens. And so that's, that's super important. And I will just say that was really one of the better moments. I think that was in the first, I think that was. That was Friday. Yeah. Of the first week. That was one yeah. of the better moments of that week overall. For all the trading you guys did, that was one of the better moments. It's the fact that you guys used each other and you had success because you did and you teed up good ideas. And there's going to be times when, when Kyle, Max gives you a bad, bad idea. And he's going to say, if Beyond gets below 120, I'm going to short it. And you get short below 120, it ticks down 50 cents, and it goes straight to 122. And you're like, that SOB, dumb. I promise I wasn't going to swear today. So, <laughs> you know, and we've got some of the younger interns in here, so I'm going to work on that. Um, you know, that was such a, but, but that isn't really the way to think about it. it. You want more information. It's your job to process the information from people around you so that it works for you. But to blame somebody else for giving you information and then you making a decision to take it and it not working out on the other person makes no sense. 
It's your job to filter the information, but you want more information. And as you, when I used to sit next to Spencer for many years as a trader, I literally could tell if a stock was going to go up based on the intonation in his voice, how excited he was about a particular level. I could just literally, I could, we could have literally built a black box program off of the sound of his voice if I could actually define it. <clears throat> and so you'll learn that from each other. You'll, you'll learn when Max says, you know, ah, it's above 94, I'm, I'm looking at it, as opposed to, guys, it's above 94. You know, and sometimes we'll be like, guys, it's really above 94. M maybe that information, you, you know, to actually short that. But like, you will be able to, <laughs> he's too excited, maybe that's a short. So you'll, you'll, you'll learn to use that information. Um, but yeah, that was a really, really good job, sharing the information, teeing it up, and, and pushing the buttons. On that note, uh, I'm sure you could have done some things better. But good example of the classic bull pattern. Good example of using a, a, a key level on the longer term charts and it working. Um, and good example of seeing that, that pole and the flag pattern and, and, and how to trade that. Now it's your turn. Do you trade the classic bull flag pattern? If so, what are your results? Let us know by leaving a comment below right now.